Brass isn't like any other material. It's very responsive, it's very visceral, it's an intimate experience. I always knew I wanted to be an artist from a young age, and then after I graduated, went to New York for a little while and was studying ceramics. I ended up taking a glass class when I was in college there, and it was just like one of those moments where you realize, oh my gosh, this is an epiphany. This is what I want to do. I feel like in my work, I try to encapsulate like that moment in time or that thing just on the edge of turning into something else, like the motion of a thing or just like something caught in time. And so I hope that that is what the viewer is taking away from it. Glass is a craft, so there is the technique piece where you have to learn how to manipulate the material, and then a more esoteric piece, which is where you learn to think creatively. What could I do with this material? How can I express myself? What am I thinking about as I'm working with it? What do I want the viewer to see, or how do I want the viewer to feel when they look at the piece? So my work over the years has grown and transformed as I've transformed and I've tried to maintain a trueness to both of those things. So the studio creates a line of functional pieces which are very technically based and require um, a high level of skill set and then I also create a series of sculptures that I take those skills then and I express myself in a more freeform manner using the glass as a sculptural element. I like to play with the glass and I like to respond to what the glass is doing. And I'm always really interested in what that could turn into. We use a blowpipe, which is about four feet long. It's a stainless steel tube, so it has a hole through the center of it. And you'll get the glass on the tip of it. And I will equate it to people like when you're trying to get honey out of a honey jar and you use that stick, it's the same process. You kind of have to twirl it so it stays on there. Otherwise, gravity is going to pull it to the floor. And you manipulate it the whole time on that blowpipe. Blow again. The blowpipe is like a baton. You can twirl it around any direction you want. Shapes are done a little bit with centrifugal force and a little bit with gravity, and then I'm manipulating them with hand tools. So I've transferred it from the blowpipe, which it has a hollow um, center through the middle of, middle of it to the solid rod, which is called the punty rod. So basically I've, I've shaped the piece as much as I can on the blowpipe, and now I'm gonna finish it over here. We're really fortunate we have such a great team right now. I will design all of the pieces in the studio, and then I'll have one of the other artists I work with make them because Glass blowing is such a physical endeavor. I really only have so much capacity and I want to really focus on the sculptural work with that. Most of my work is site specific, so it's driven by the environment, the specifics of the environment, what kind of lighting is available, and who the viewer is. Our clear glass comes from North Carolina and when it comes to us, it's silica, soda, ash, limestone. And we'll take that and we'll put it into the 2,400 degree furnace. And it will sit in that furnace for approximately 12 hours while it cooks and turns into glass. And then we turn the furnace down to 2,000 degrees. So now we've got our clear glass ready to go. And depending on if we're gonna use color or not, we'll introduce the colors at different points, depending on what kind of piece we're making. Those colors come from manufacturers in Germany and Australia, and they're formulated with different minerals and metallic oxides that are combined with a glass base that matches my clear base. So there's a little bit of chemistry in glass in that each of those chemicals that make those colors has to fit. For example, copper is a really interesting one. Copper can be red, it can be green, or it can be blue, depending on what else it's mixed with with the glass. I really have an affinity for the colors that have, they're called reactionary colors, and they have a gold and silver metallic sheen to them. I think that they encompass all the awesome things about glass. You know, super sparkly, a little bit transparent, a little bit opaque, depending on how the light's looking at it, and just really fits in a lot of environments. It could go in a contemporary home, it could go in a traditional home. It, it, everyone likes it. It's like the universal favorite. 
Education is a huge part of people understanding value. Twice a year we open our doors for the public to come in and watch us blow glass. We offer a hands-on experience where people can try making their own glass piece because I've realized over the years that we make it look easy and it's not. <laughs> so we like to get people in there, let them figure out, oh my gosh, it is really hot and it is hard to work with. But then also for them to have that experience and that memory when they look at that piece. People like glass because it seems like it's alive. It's something you want to touch. It sparkles. It really reacts well with light. So it um, draws us to it. And I think we use glass in so many different ways in our lives. I mean, eyeglasses, glass in our cars, glass in skyscrapers, glass, you know, to look through the Hubble telescope into Mar at Mars and the technology that goes into glass manufacturing is so crazy exciting. I think as an artist, I feel like that also adds to my passion of what I can do with this material. I'm definitely much more interested in the process than I am in the product. You know, I have pieces that are all over the country that I will probably never actually see in person again, and I'm good with that. Because for me, I feel like the spirit of that piece is embodied inside of me did a piece for a hospital a couple of years ago and the idea that so many people were gonna be in that space and probably not there for a good reason and to be able to give them something else to contemplate, maybe take them to a different place for a while and have respite is really a powerful thing. I love animals and we have a relationship with the Humane Society where we create work that we then donate a portion of the proceeds back to the Humane Society adopted my cat from there, and that makes me feel really good because as an artist, you don't have a lot of extra money, and one of the ways I can give back is to do things like that. I think that we live in such a consumer society. The nicest gift you can give is something that's handmade, and supporting a local artist is keeping money in the economy around you, supporting creativity, you know, adding, uh, uniqueness to your area, and I think people appreciate that.